we uncover what's working and what's breaking on the internet and why. Today, we're going to cover the Akamai DNS outage that occurred today that impacted the availability and um, reachability and performance of their customer sites that are hosted on their CDN service. So to talk about the outage, I'm joined by Mike Hicks, who's joining us from Australia. Welcome, Mike. Thanks, Angelique. It's good to, good to be here again. So, uh, yeah, the... Um... So it's interesting you said it happened happened uh, happened today it happened yesterday for us. So, right. <laughs> so, so but it, it, it's actually it's, it's kind of important what goes on there. So so you're right. So the outage occurred on July uh, 22nd uh, that we had there. Um, first sort of saw it uh, occurring at uh, eight, around 8:38 uh, Pacific time, which is uh, sort of around 3:38 p.m. UTC. Uh, and what we actually immediately started to see um, a load of app, app, uh, sort of apps apps failing, uh, and the scope of them uh, was uh, all the uh, anything that was sort of hosted within Akamai itself. So what we then found out really was uh, what was occurring was the uh, Akamai Edge DNS service was the uh, was, was starting to have the issues uh, going going across there. This impacted everyone around the globe. You know, I jokingly said it impacted us yesterday, uh, but because sort of in the APAC region there, uh, people were out. We didn't notice the, the effect going on so much, but obviously from a North America uh, and, uh, and uh, EMEA, it was that sort of right in that, that sweet spot where it started to, uh, to occur uh, from right. there. So you can see the duration of the outage went on for like an hour, uh, went from there, um, and all the services I say were sort of terminating there and looking at uh, anything was sitting on, on the, uh, the Akamai. If yeah. you wanted to, sorry, to go ahead. That image there sort of representing different application and um, website providers, but what they all had in common was that they were using servers that were um, within Akamai's network. Yeah, absolutely. So everything across from there, so we can see different regions coming into there, but everything was actually, as you say, hosted within the, uh, the Akamai servers, uh, servers themselves. Yeah, so if we actually look at what was happening from a customer perspective or from an end user point of view, they'd have actually started to get sort of messages coming onto their screens as you know, sort of service unavailable. Uh, and what we found was they actually weren't able to re, uh, resolve the DNS name. So this is what it started to go across. This is one particular customer who was actually impacting for the whole duration. So as you said, that the actual duration of the outage was, was an hour. Uh, we could see everyone affected around the globe uh, going across from there. Um, if you actually go in, you know, just from a, a, um, a, a perspective of seeing what was happening from a path point of view, we could actually see the network was intact. There was nothing across the network. To be honest, we'd actually seen what was going on sort of up front, where we actually see it here in the coming down, we had a, a DNS failure or a problem to actually resolve the name that was going across that, that, that side right, of things. Right. So, what, right, so this wasn't a network issue. This wasn't uh, no. something that was related even to the availability of Akamai's CDN service itself. I mean, the, Akamai was fairly exactly. clear that the scope of the outage was to the edge DNS service that they use to load balance user traffic to their um, CDN infrastructure. And that's quite common for uh, CDN providers, that's typically the way in which they um, direct users to their service. It gives, by effectively hosting um, the domain names for the sites that they host, enables them to return the optimal response to users at any given time. And that could be based on where the user is located. It could be based on the CDN itself and how it's performing and its availability. And it could depend on you know, how they want to distribute traffic to optimize their resources or optimize, you know, for the kind of content that they're serving it could be a number of different factors, but it gives them exactly. the ability to control how users are connecting to their service. So it is really important that they have this ability. So DNS is actually fairly critical to the functioning um, of, of the CDN service itself, um, but it does create complications. Um, so what we see typically is that you, you will typically have like an apex domain. So this would be, you know, if we were to use Thousand Eyes as an example, this would be thousandeyes.com. And what we typically see with that is that that is not something that is hosted by the CDN provider. It's usually hosted by uh, different providers. Uh, in a lot of cases, we see 
to third party CDM or DNS providers hosting the Apex domain. And then we'll see like a dub, 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 you know, in, in our case, dub, 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 thousand eyes.com. Mm-hmm. And that is typically the domain uh, name that is um, hosted by the CDN provider. And so the CDN provider will then, uh, you know, point that very often will point that domain to a C name. And sometimes there'll be multiple C names um, before you finally get to an A record that will then return the IP address to the users. So there could be kind of different levels of um, records before you get a response from the CDM provider. And again, that's to give them more control in terms of yeah. you know, uh, the optimal response. So yeah. that's kind of how DNS and, and CDM providers work together. Now, from an architecture standpoint, there's like a few different scenarios, as I mentioned. Um, but you, we typically see with like CDNs that you're going to have an enterprise that's either going to have, they're basically just going to be using their CDN provider for DNS. Sometimes we see other companies, and we'll look at an example of this, um, in this case, um, Amazon, um, but other mm-hmm. companies do this as well. Well, they'll basically have a DNS provider that's external to the CDM provider, and they're using that to distribute traffic um, across multiple CDMs, you know, and they do that for redundancy purposes, and they also do that for resilience as well, or or, excuse me, for performance as well. So um, it has multiple benefits. Um, And so it's interesting if we look, for example, because you, know, you showed a particular customer of Akamai's that was impacted for the entire duration of this outage. Yep. Um, but if we look at just Amazon sites, so we'll look at www.amazon.com, and we can see here. And you know, again, if we just um, if we just remember that the outage started, basically, let's go back. Couple of uh, yeah. so, so started here. at uh, yeah fifteen forty UTC. So, yeah. yeah, so around this period of time. So you know, it's yeah. just the onset of it. You know, we're looking at we're effectively testing to the service every couple of minutes. Now, then in the next interval, we see okay, so we see an SSL error for one of the locations that are trying to connect to Amazon.com, and then in the next test, we see okay, a DNS error, which is consistent with some of the other um, uh, issues that we saw customers experiencing. But beyond that, we really don't see any issue with um, users connecting to their service, either in terms of availability, or if we look at page load, for example, there's not significant degree of variation. What's interesting about Amazon is that they use their own DNS service uh, to distribute uh, traffic across the multiple CDM providers they use. They use their own CDM service, um, CloudFront, but they also use Akamai and, you know, at various times they'll also use um, CDNs like Fastly and others. So they really have um, the ability to very quickly and kind of flexibly change who they're routing to based on different conditions. And in the case of Akamai, if there were certain parts of their infrastructure uh, that were unavailable or certain um, aspects of their service, they could you know, effectively um, use their alternate providers. Um, mm. And so you know, this is an interesting example, and we saw this in some of the other recent um, outages. There was an Akamai one, as well as a Fastly one recently, where we saw the same thing, right? We had um, different, you know, effectively the same outage, same service went down, but different customers had different outcomes depending on their architectures, depending on how quickly they were able to um, respond uh, yeah. when outages happened. Yeah. And, and what they responded with as well. Right, so right. What, what exactly. took, yeah. 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 So um, it's interesting, you know, there's, there's certainly kind of the, the question of like multiple CDNs, which I think has, a, you know, as I, as I mentioned, it has a lot of benefits, not just resiliency. You get um, benefits even, you know, kind of day to day. You can you 
you know, there's performance upside. Yeah. Um, I had a couple of folks were asking, you know, does it make sense to have maybe two DNS providers as well as multiple CDM providers? And we were actually having this discussion um, internally earlier about this and kind of weighing, you know, it seems like there's maybe some pros and cons here. On one hand, there's a whole nother, you know, I mean, there's the cost associated with it, right? Like not just yeah. one provider, but two. Um, but also there's the management overhead. There's kind of keeping them synced and consistent across um, the, the different providers. Um, and, you know, that there's a lot of complexity in terms of managing all of that. And really the only kind of uh, benefit would come into play if one of the providers was just 100% down yes. because DNS is already inherently resilient. So if you had a single provider and some of their infrastructure, some of their DNS service servers were down, the way that DNS works is that depending on the resolver, they're gonna keep going down the list until they find something that's gonna respond to them or is that yeah. available yeah. in a lot of instances. Yeah. And so it's not like, hey, one and done, they're going to try to continue to reach, you know, a, a server that's going to give them a response. So, you know, it, it seems like the only kind of real upside to having those two primary ones in this scenario um, would be in like a complete failure scenario, which seems like it's not. It's, it's not something that's unlikely to, right. to, to occur. Right. Yeah, you know, the, 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 if it, that's happening, there's bigger problems in the world. I think. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I think you've touched on some important points there in, in the, the sort of how far do we go in, in, in sort of backing up the backups and backing up the backups. Yeah. And it, it, you've mentioned the costs involved across from there. It's also got to see what's the impact. That cost's got to take in the risk is what impact's going to be to my customers. Because even if I have it, you know, and, it, and it's, you're, you're absolutely right, there's a complexity and everything is, but how quickly can I get that system up and going in, in that instance? You know, if I've got a complete failover uh, scenario happening there, Am I going to suddenly overload from a CDN perspective? Am I going to overload all those CDNs? Um, is the performance going to be degraded? What I lose in performance by that time, um, does it really going to cost me to my business? And sort of all these risk factors, I think, have got to be taken in, into consideration. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I agreed. And I, I think this is an interesting question, right? And I think there's, there's mm -hmm. probably, you know, depending on who you talk to and what their business is, there may be different opinions on this. I yeah. mean, you know, just when I think about it, you know, and kind of like there, there's certainly when we think about redundancy, it seems like, well, redundancy, of course, is good, but there's all the, also other considerations. You kind of have to like weigh the pros and cons depending on your needs and your business. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's other folks who are listening and who may have different opinions on this. And yeah. uh, we certainly welcome you to um, weigh in as well and, and let us know what you think on this topic. Um, you know, is multi DNS, multi CDN combination make a lot of sense for you? Um, uh, yeah, like, let us know what you think. So given, you know, what we've looked at in terms of kind of the different, you know, and obviously, we just looked at two examples, two customers, um, there's many more impacted, mm -hmm. but they kind of follow a similar pattern in terms of who was impacted versus not. So given that, like, yeah. what would you say are kind of some of the top takeaways from from what we saw today yeah so, so i think we've sort of touched on one of the main ones it, it, it is sort of how far do we go in terms of redundancy you know, do we have the dns redundant dns systems do we have redundant cdns do we have multi-cdn uh, and, and served you know fronted as you did with an amazon perspective all those considerations and again you know and I, we've touched on this it comes back to how far do we go depends on what my business is. Is my brand going to be affected or is my revenue going to be affected? You know, that, that might be contributing factors that come from there. But, but so on the back of it, what you've also then, the other, or the, the other one or the other two that, that come to mind is um, we've got to have a backup plan, right? So yeah. do nothing is not an option. Um, or it might be the option, but again, both from that, <laughs> that risk medication. But but it's it's what's that backup plan going to be? You know, So it, it may be, right, we're prepared to live with a single... Uh, a DNS, no redundancy, no, no CDN redundancy, I was going to say, uh, from those, those scenarios. Um, our plan is what we're going to do is we're going to suddenly spin up everything in our remote data center and then cut our users across to that. Probably not an effective plan for most people, but you've got to have this plan that's going to suit your environment. And again, based on those risks, you, you, you're going to have uh, from there. 
Right. And then once we've got, sorry, yeah, once we've got that plan, the, the, the third takeaway or the third thing we've learned from that is when do I trigger that plan? You know, this outage, it had quite a, a big impact or had a very big impact, you know, from there, just, just from a, a brand reputation uh, uh, side of things, if nothing else. Um, it, but it was only an hour in duration. Right. So, you know, we had some the other week was sort of going on for four hours, five hours at a time. It's when do you take steps to do that? And that's when do, I've got my playbook and my, my backup plan in, in, um, in flight. What, at what point do I do that? And to be able to do that, I need to understand the components that are failing, the components that are causing a degraded service that are impacting my digital experience. And once I've got that, I can then make an informed decision. Right. I implement plan A now because that's our quickest way to get things back up and going. Um, it's uh, in, the, in the old days, I'm very old, going back, you know, our backup plan was um, to put all the magnetic tapes in a car and drive from London to Germany and start up the new data centre. It would take us four days to get this going. Yeah. Obviously, that's not going to be uh, beneficial now. But um, there's those types of things you take into consideration of what can the business survive. But yep. I know, we knew when to trigger that getting into the car situation because of the, the we had visibility into that, that system. And now we've moved on. You know, we've got all these components that make up these hidden dependencies out, outside of our control um, that will have a direct impact on our overall application performance uh, going on from there. We need to be able to understand how they link together, how they work together, so that I can kick a plan off anyone uh, at, at the correct time. Yeah, so redundancy potentially backup plans yep. and then visibility so you know you yeah. know when you actually need to trigger those backup plans all right so that was the akamai dns outage in a nutshell and we will be back next week to talk about some other really interesting incidents that have happened recently so do join us next week and uh, it was great to have you on mike you're also going to be joining us next week so we're excited about that uh, so also, for those of you who are not subscribed to the show, don't forget to do that. And if you do, you can drop us an email at uh, internetreport at thousandeyes.com and you can request a free t-shirt. We'll um, get that right out to you. Just send us your address and your t-shirt size and, uh, and we'll get that shipped over. So until next week, take care. Thank you so much.